screen with me? That's good. You should. I know what I'm talking about. Um, no, they're not going up Fifth Street. They're just continuing to congregate on Broadway. Some in the street, some on the sidewalk. I mean, this is a people's takeover. Again, I, I see no LNPD presence. I see no National Guard presence, at least not at the street level. But there seems to be some sort of congregation now. So again, now it seems like we're, we're having a bit of a split here. Some people are going up Fifth Street, back to downtown, while others are sort of drifting up Broadway. Looks like a lot of backtracking, though. Yeah. More than likely, probably heading back to either the mayor's office or the courthouse, city hall. The message hasn't diluted. I mean, as tired as these folks might be, they're just as loud downtown as they were 25 blocks or so up in the West End. And again, this situation has, these protests have grown in the past three or four days. There haven't been diminishing returns. The real question is, will they, they continue to grow? Particularly as there have been no charges against anyone in either of these shootings at this point. And it, particularly as there are reports now that the Breonna Taylor case may last another two or three months. Which I believe the governor scolded that at his press briefing today. multiple helicopters 
and multiple drones too in the air. Unsure if those are friendly to these protesters or not. Most of them assume that it's some form of surveillance by the police department, but no, no way to tell from down here. Now going back into the heart of downtown again. This group, their flow, their movement by police or National Guard. None. Good strap. There you go. So it looks like, you know, where I said we're headed back downtown. We're in the heart of downtown, pretty much approaching it. If this will be to get back to Jefferson Street, in front of the mayor's office, the courthouse, in front of that area, there, there was talk of going to Mayor Fisher's house directly. That's a little bit further up the road. That might be that might be for another day.
Ding ist es nicht. You certainly see police helicopters shining their light down here. Y'all have a choice. If you want to stay out here 
and you believe, look, I'm staying out here, bro. Ain't nobody telling me to go home. Do it. And you feel like, no, this means a lot more to me. I'm going to stay out here. Do it. We already won, y'all. I'm telling y'all we won. They don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. That's why they look. Look at them, y'all. Look at them. They don't know what to do. They want to enforce the curfew. So, all right, cool. Y'all want the curfew? Y'all want people to go home? Cool. Bright and early, I'm going to be here. I don't know what y'all going to do. If it means that much to you, meet me here in the morning. Bright and early, I'm going to be over here with a star. Look, the little, the little frat from McDonald's, I'm going to have me one of them. And a chicken biscuit. And I'm going to be over here in the morning. Yo, 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 yo. Hey, this is loud right here. I need everybody to listen. Just got messages from Trump. Everybody hey, listen. Listen, listen, listen. 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 Hey. Trump just invoked the Insurrection Act, which allows military troops to suppress rebellion. He can tell them to do whatever he wants them to do. Any force, including deadly. So they say, if y'all wanna, y'all wanna leave, leave. If you want them leave, if you don't wanna leave, leave. It's on y'all. I'm not leaving. It's whatever y'all wanna do.
the half until curfew. Mayor Jim Strickland imposed the curfew today after scattered confrontations between police and people downtown last night in which some businesses, a few, were damaged. All right, this is Alvin Strub with the Courier Journal, kind of standing in for reporter Philip Bailey for a moment. Uh, you heard some of the event organizers there talking to the crowd, trying to direct them on uh, what to do next. Uh, now no look at color. No look at race. If we learn like that from each other, I have my parents all the more. That's right. And I may have grown up with most of my friends. I live with folks up. And they treat me just like one of them. Better than us. It was a wonderful But we were all the same thing. People are ducking because of a dragonfly. There's nothing flying, just the dragonfly. Shit, it's going that way. Take you through the crowd here a little bit. We've been static for a while. It's a slower protest than last night. It is, it is quieter, it is... One would say mellow would be maybe the word. It's a mellow protest. Tennessee Highway Patrol. See an officer with a nightstick. March is continuing here. Some of the crowd objected to the nightstick you saw. You can see, I can see ahead of me here, we're walking north on Front Street. This is Memphis City Hall. So we're about an hour away from curfew, which Memphis Mayor Jim Strickland issued today. Hour and a half away. And the seventh floor, that top floor, is where leading city officials have their offices. You can see a heavy police presence at the corner of Flint and Poplar.
See a police officer in right gear atop the Front Street garage there. There's a heavy police presence with shields down the end of the street. If you can see them, you can see those figures. What the hell is addressing the crowd? People are upset once again with the presence of police in riot gear bearing billy clubs and night sticks. Last night, at the end of the night, police officers in riot shields and with nightsticks cleared the streets. It was about 1 a.m. this morning. Group is stopped. You can see Memphis City Hall. This is Front Street between Adams Avenue and Poplar Avenue. You can see people locking arms. I'm going to take you a little closer. Small section demonstrators down interacting with the police. You can see through the garage there, those flashing lights are Tennessee Highway Patrol on the Hernando de Soto Bridge. There's traffic still moving on the Hernando de Soto Bridge heading eastbound. I know what happened last night obviously was really sad with Mr. McAtee and you know it is a barbecue restaurant and you know but tonight with them you know this feeling a little bit more celebration almost not having the opposition out. Exactly and a lot of people didn't know that he gave a lot of his dinners to police officers. He was known for that so they just killed a friend, <laughs> a black friend, just crazy. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. Don't bite the hand that feeds you I'm telling you it's a good person. Well, thank you all so much. Have a good night. Just hearing from some uh, protesters here in downtown Louisville, Jefferson Square. How are you? 
photos. Yeah, right. How you been, man? Doing good, buddy. How are you? You laugh. Yeah, I am. They're talking about this is about Breonna Taylor. This is about all these other folks that this stuff's going on in these different parts of the country and all over the world. But it's not about these individuals. There's these individuals happening all over the country. And, and, and they talk about this one case, these two cases. It's not about these cases. It's about not being able to go to the basketball court without being put on our face and search. It's about not being able to sit on our mama's porch without having the police show up. It's about not being able to drive through parts of town without getting pulled over just because of the way we look. I got pulled over and searched 14 times before I got my first ticket, and I got my first ticket the first year I was driving. That is the problem. We just want to be left alone. You know, leave us alone like you do the white folks up here in the Highlands. Thank you. Don't treat us on the basketball court like you treat them folks up there on the tennis court. That's what we want. We want y'all to leave us alone like you leave the rich folks alone. Thank you. They can commit any crime they want any day of the week and pay a little bit of money and nothing happens to them. And then us, if we can't afford bail, we lose our job, we lose our house, we lose our car, everything because we can't get out of jail with $500 where they can pay a million dollars to go home. Well, that's what it's about. We want to be equal. We want to be treated like the rich people are treated. There's all these cases. There's hundreds of them. And they're trying to say one name all over the country. Trying to say one name. One name. It's not one name. There's thousands and thousands of cases. And that's what we're here about. It's, not it's the whole world. Thank you for your time. Alton Strub with the Courier Journal. I heard from a gentleman there. This is downtown on Jefferson Square. Protesters are out. Uh, we are well past curfew time now, uh, but yet there has been no presence of law enforcement and things seem to have a different vibe tonight. It is a lot more uh, peaceful, celebratory, despite last night's um, tragedy, shooting at 26th and Broadway. Uh, we are, we have been live now for about an hour and a half, unfortunately our batteries on this camera are getting low and we are going to have to swap those out but we will be right back with you in just a few moments. Thank you. Tune in.
This was something you didn't really see the first few nights of the pro I'm testing. So the vehicles are really popular. It's going to take you a little closer. Not much more. I don't want to. My presence. People are saying there are kids out here. The National Guard is in Memphis at the request of Mayor Strickland. They were here last night, too. Lee, listen to Devontae Hill. That thumping is again police horses inside of a trailer. We're not going that way. We're not going that way. So my request is for half of you guys to fall to a place to where our children and our wives and our daughters are not are, are not seeing you guys in an intimidating way. That's our request. Because right there, the way you're standing is scary. We're again discussing and we're asking members of law enforcement and in the Tennessee National Guard to back away from the protest. One Tennessee trooper just put down his nightstick. Come on, come on. We're not here to stand in their face. We're not here to stand in their face. Let's go. They don't even know what they're doing. They're trying to get their children and their wives and their daughters out of the way. We're not here to stand in their face. We're not here to stand in their face. Now the group is approaching. a weapon visible there. You know, officers, it's okay. Here's the deal. Y'all just make yourself feel bad. Make yourself feel bad. And I hate you. Come on, come on. So listen, you guys just saw the message from officer. It's your hell for you as a black man that you don't speak up. You don't speak up when injustice go on. You don't say a word. You worry about your job. That's my issue with you, black man. When the white man turn us down, we stay there and be quiet. Another group is turning away. Larger body is walking away. Speaking of the National Guard and police, though more are coming. See now more are coming out here. People are walking away from them as a heavier presence comes out of what is Civic Center Plaza here. So I'm walking along the grass. Doesn't seem that many people are left there. Sorry about that, y'all. I was just going to have a bit of a traffic jam, and so I wanted to let you let people through. So if you see white in these bottles here, that was last night there was tear gas, and so when someone gets tear gassed, you pour that in their eye. It does not seem likely that we're going to have a similar situation tonight. Right now it is about 8.53 an hour and seven left before the 10 p.m. curfew. Here we are in downtown Memphis. We are at the corner of Poplar Avenue and 2nd Street. I'm point, Sam Hardman with the Commercial Appeal. Everyone has pretty much stayed put in Jefferson Square. There was a bit of a conversation going on um, about President Trump evoking the Insurrection Act, an 1807 uh, act that allows the president to use military force to quash rebellions. Uh, however, if you've been paying attention to local or, or national news and you've read a history book, um, <clears throat> there are some legal ramifications for that and some legal barriers, apparently, for the president to do that. That hasn't stopped, however, some from being overly concerned about the National Guard returning or police returning. Again, we are sitting somewhere about an hour after the curfew. Um, Many people, young people in particular, riding on top of cars, blocking traffic, 
going down the wrong way on traffic, um, basically occupying Jefferson Square. <clears throat> and again, the question is, how long will police, how long will National Guard allow this to, to go on? Is this an effort by Louisville's leadership <clears throat> to allow some steam to get out? Or as we see here, there doesn't seem to be anybody moving or going anywhere. Will these folks just continue to linger? I hate to use a cliche here, but you know, since we're doing TV, we can do it. Um, only time will tell. But I certainly get the impression here that these folks don't intend to move. They don't intend to go anywhere. Um, I know my colleague Sarah Ladd is still down at 25th and Broadway, 26th and Broadway in, in Russell neighborhood, in the Russell neighborhood. We'll see uh, if there's any effort to move folks from that location. But for right now, we are, we are stationary here uh, until further notice. The chants continue. The occupation of Jefferson Square continues. And remember, it was just a few days ago where we saw Louisville police tear up and empty out supplies that were left out for activists. We see supplies everywhere along here. Clearly, this is a different tact. But I notice more and more the buzzing of these military-grade helicopters. So again, the question is, how long, how long is this going to last? And yet, we keep hearing this, <clears throat> that this martial law has been in, in evoked. Folks, the only thing that has at least made its way through the national press has been this conversation around my light on. Sorry, when I'm, uh, I'm adjusting, kind of learning this light. I did not have a light last night. I was using the light on my phone. I mean, last night was kind of wild. Saturday, though, was kind of wild. 
It's a different night tonight. Sedate. I don't know if sedate. So definitely Mellow. a line of police Mellow. rolling up on Market Street. And, and there's certainly a, an added tension now to the crowd that has changed quite dramatically. So again, we're, we're past curfew. And now you see, you certainly see an anticipation by protesters here. And you definitely see a contingency coming up here, appearing to block off parts of Jefferson Street. Here's, here's, here's SWAT coming up, up Jefferson Street. Coming eastbound on Jefferson Street. Let me, let me go get my stuff real quick. Let's run back over here. Strup with the Courier Journal here. We've got a plethora of state police walking up. Looks like maybe 75, I can't tell. Looks like they're gonna build a wall right there across the street. I'm trying to kind of box the protesters in. I'm gonna pass it back to Philip Bailey. Yeah, I mean, a significant amount of SWAT now assembled at what is seventh in Jefferson, pretty much standing in place. Now you see protesters behind us here standing firm as well. And now it seems like the SWAT is definitely mobilizing, blocking the entire street. Again, they appear to be coming west, oh, excuse me, moving eastbound. Now the street lights have gone out. I don't know if that was done on purpose. I, I don't know if that was done on purpose or not. But now the street lights are completely out where the SWAT team is assembled. And there doesn't seem to be a, at least firm, organized effort on the protest side here. There are certainly those who seem to be standing firm in the face of the SWAT. But there are others who are scattering. Streetlights, I haven't seen that before. Yeah, I don't know if that was by accident or not, but it, it's quite strategic. I mean, it's only it's only that one section, it's only that one section where the SWAT team is, and now they're on the sidewalk. They definitely seem to be mobilizing at this point. <clears throat> it doesn't look like that there's a firm line of protesters like it was in previous incarnations of this protest, despite having a more sizable crowd. Oh, it feels like that's <clears throat> changing right now. That's literally, that literally is changing as we're speaking. There's an arm of folks who are arm in arm, and now, now the protesters seem to be, they're approaching the SWAT team. So we're protesters sort of out here. Yeah, I mean, there, there's there's always that carrier pigeon who's sort of out in the front here. But this is this is certainly the front lines of this. A lot of people yelling in the back behind us that it was a peaceful protest. Why are you doing this? Again, I believe that we still do have a, a curfew in place. It's ten o'clock. All right, I, th I think we're about. To, I think we're about to have some gas deployed here in a second. Yeah, seeing the gas mask they put on. So we're going to put on ours as well. 
So excuse us while we, we set up, put on our own masks. Looks like I hear them talking now. Excuse me if I sound a little muffled. Um, <clears throat> again, we're gonna see here if, I mean, we, we, I can't exactly hear what the SWAT team is announcing, but they are mounted with their shields. The protesters who were advancing have pretty much stopped where they are. And again, I can't really hear myself what the SWAT team is saying on their loudspeaker. But they, but they are definitely putting on their gas masks. So we're, we're in standoff mode at this point. There, there, are, there still seem to be more protesters than SWAT, but I don't know if that matters at this point. The SWAT team are the ones with the weapons, at least the ones that we can see. The other side, we're not sure if they have any weapons or not. I've seen some baseball bats, some firearms from earlier, but not recently. Folks have their umbrellas out just in case. I'd say there are about still a good healthy. 300, maybe 400 demonstrators out here. It's hard to tell how many SWAT team there are, but I would say that there are at least 80 of them. In addition to, all right, so that's, a, that's the flashbang. That's the flashbang. That's the flashbang. That's the flashbang. So again, this is Philip Bailey, political writer here at the Courier Journal. Loud flashbang there. We're here at Sixth. We're here at Sixth and Jefferson. Flashbangs have been now, now the now the SWAT team is advancing. I'm hearing I'm hearing multiple shots now. Could be rubber bullets, flashbangs, rubber bullets. The SWAT team is certainly advancing. So they're, they're moving along quite, quite methodically. Quite methodically, they're moving along here. And again, More, more flashbangs, more flashbangs being deployed. Again, we're here at 6th and Jefferson. Much of the crowd is now beginning to dissipate, but there still is a strong group that is standing at the same line with the, approach, with the approaching SWAT. Some people are throwing water bottles. I've seen one or two people throwing water bottles, but they're beginning to, re to re recess. Another flashbang. More flashbangs going off. That might, that might actually be, that might be uh, tear gas there. That's definitely tear gas. All right. That's definitely tear gas. So, so I'd suggest people cover their eyes. There's efforts to try to extinguish some of it. You see demonstrators trying to extinguish 
extinguished the, the tear gas canisters, but they're still being deployed. Still being deployed pretty consecutively. And now, that is definitely rubber pellets being deployed, being shot here. So we're gonna, we're gonna keep our press credentials prominent, but we have seen as of late uh, National Guard, police, etc., use some of this force against against um, against the media. Now this is a, this is a heavy dose, a heavy dose of tear gas, a heavy dose, a heavy dose of tear gas coming through, like a fog, like an invading fog. Yep, we definitely are. I mean, that stuff stings. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Woo! Woo, baby. That's, be that's better than a shot of bourbon, I'll tell you that. Woo! Woo! Yeah. So that was, uh, again, King Louis. King Louis here has been, has been defaced. Definitely with, definitely doused in orange. Let's go right here. Woo! Ooh! Ooh! Man! That burns. Ooh, we got to get out of here. Woo! Woo! Wee! Mmm! Well, if the goal was to disperse the crowd, that has certainly worked. <laughs> Still firing tear gas, which is a chemical weapon. Stay with you as long as we possibly can here. That, that has that has wiped out this crowd significantly. They are Oh man. So again, <laughs> Philip Bailey here, political writer at the Courier Journal with Alton Strump, cameraman extraordinaire. And the few times that we've had National Guard deployed in our city, this is one of them. And tear gas is certainly an effective way of, ooh, again, oh, wait, walk through another wave of that. Yeah, that was the goal. It worked. Oh. Yeah. 
Ja. Why, why do you think that they, uh, <laughs> she was just there. I think it was because of the other riders. They just assumed they put us all together as one. We're not. There are people out there doing things that they shouldn't be doing. But me, I'm here, and everybody I've talked to is here for a peaceful protest to make a change. So we, your name and your title? My name is Marissa. I'm a musician. So, and this is my fiance, Abe. He is a mixed race. So, it's something that holds dear to us. No, Absolutely no, yeah. no, if they would have just water said bottles, to be back. People with water bottles? Why? Yeah. But you know what? I'll be back. Every day. My dad grew up in the United States in the 1960s, being a Puerto Rican, moving to the United States. He went through all this shit. Do you think that the protests will continue to grow? Absolutely. Yes. I think more people will start to see, but the only thing they show on the, on the TVs is them tear gassing us or one graffiti place. That's not what was happening here today. I marched all the way to 26th and back because that's what I believe is what we should be doing. What do you think should happen with the old Breonna Taylor shooting <clears throat> and now Mr. Dave McAfee? What should happen? He should be pro they should be prosecuted, the ones responsible, all the way up. Everybody uh, Taylor's boyfriend should be released. It the charges against him have been dismissed. They have, been, they have, they have been dismissed. I haven't been here, so we didn't know. <laughs> I've got a dead phone. It's in the car, like two blocks away. <laughs> Kenneth, Kenneth Walker, sir. They've been dismissed. I'm in the middle of the crowd. So, so you all believe that these protests will grow and continue? Yes. As I they think should. In smaller cities now, I think maybe the town I grew up in, in where there was only a few African American men, I, I you know, I see people growing up though, and they're going to get angry. They're going to have friends. We all have friends. Uh, all races are waking up and saying enough is enough. What do you say to those who are concerned? There is a contingency out there in this community who are concerned about looting and violence against against property. What do you say to them when they say, "Look, this has gone too far. We saw the smashed up windows downtown." What do you say to those folks? I say that I don't actually see that happening down here very often. I see more police in the media controlling it and putting it. That's not what's happening. Don't punish the deeds of many for the mistakes of few. The people that have have done that should actually be called out between the people in the protest also. I did I did see a lot of individuals when folks were trying to vandalize stop them. Yes. So you you even though you've been tear gassed, is your is this your first time being tear gassed? Yes, actually. So even though you've been tear gassed, you, you intend to come back out? Yes. Absolutely. Always. Until till something changes. No peace, no justice. Thank you very much, you all. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, again, again, I think um, here at 6th and Jefferson, tear gas is not fun. I'll tell you that. I mean, I don't care how much pepper you like on your, your steak. You don't, you don't want that. But it goes away. And as these folks are saying, they will continue to be out here. We saw the largest protest today of any of the protests. And there still are questions about the Breonna Taylor shooting, uh, about uh, Mr. Dave McAtee's shooting that have not been answered. Why were uh, police using a no-knock warrant against Breonna Taylor when they were looking for mail? Uh, why were um, the National Guard and others at 26th and Broadway yesterday. Um, a lot of questions need to be answered. A lot of demands are still out there, both on the mayor and, and even the governor. But <clears throat> clearly there was a little, a little more lax, at least in the beginning. But it, tonight ended very much in the same way the other nights ended, which is there was a, eventually a, a tired attitude from the police and National Guard, and they decided to deploy um, tear gas and other uh, tactics um, to disperse the crowd. We did not see any, I did not see any acts of violence or destruction of property, but they were here beyond, uh, they were here beyond the curfew. As you, you see, there still are, there still are SWAT lined up, pushing people out. You have Oh, they're now shooting rubber bullets. They're now, they're now, they're now shooting rubber bullets. So again, shooting shooting rubber bullets, 
indiscriminately, not necessarily choosing between activists and the press. But that, that fits in line with what we've seen these past few days. Yep. Yep. So again, excuse me, folks, excuse me, excuse me. So again, we, um, you know, not necessarily sure what specific act engendered or created um, the response from SWAT, but, but, um, Certainly, something occurred, or maybe it was just a maybe it was just a violation, violation of the of the curfew. So, so we shall see what happens next. But I think you know, the SWAT certainly did an effective job of dispersing the crowd. But again, not I mean the, the crowd was occupying Jefferson Square. Certainly, certainly was, was occupying occupying Jefferson Square, but I, there wasn't necessarily any vandalism or destruction that we had seen. But that doesn't mean that there wasn't any. But again, um, the largest protest you certainly have seen of the four nights that have protests have occurred. We're now at 5th and Liberty. So about a block up, a block over. More, can more canisters seem to be flying now. And you still have a smattering group of activists and, and protesters out here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, they're shooting from the roof. Okay, okay, let's move. Okay. So they're, they're deploying chemical weapons and shooting from the rooftops of Metro Safe. Whatever they can do at this point to disperse the crowd. Whatever they can do to disperse the crowd. That, that canister. That canister of of pepper spray, I mean of, of tear gas, hit that one guy right on the shoulder, right upside the head. While these folks might be making a valiant effort, it may, it may be a losing battle at this point. But as we heard, I mean, there are people who have endured, endured, uh, man, I got a man on crutches out here, that's how dedicated some people are. Man can't even walk fully in the eye. Um, oh, another, another, another canister. Another canister. Um, and again, people who have been pepper sprayed and hit with rubber bullets today, are telling us at the Courier Journal that they intend to return. So, if this is going to continue, the question is, where does the valve let out? What is? What are the necessary steps that could quell some of this and, and if you talk to the people out here in the streets they'll make it pretty clear the firing the charging and the arrest of these officers the questions about the body cam footage or lack thereof those those questions don't go away with the deployment of tear gas tonight in fact one would argue that maybe those questions are even enhanced because now there seems to be almost a both sides sort of increasing the other. Because we've seen over these past four days the crowd size increasing, not decreasing. The tactics by police of deploying tear gas and curfews, pepper spray, flashbangs has not decreased their energy. If anything, it's increased. Has again it's like SWAT police have oh, stopped advancing. Later in the evening. I'd say there's about less Stop now. Me. Maybe about
Everyone, it's 925. We have 35 minutes until curfew. They're an absent right here. He's addressing the group. Say that they have milk. You see every storefront boarded up across the, across the city. Heavy, heavy LMPD contingent there at what is that? I think Fourth and Jefferson. So again, there there are actors who are sort of moving, moving out, moving away. And it'll also be interesting to see if if activists up their game. Was an attempt to use leaf blowers, which you saw used in Hong Kong protests, against the company from China, to you know, push back any tear gas. I saw some folks here with umbrellas today. Um, certainly, they've they've mastered the the water bottles and Maalox and, and milk to, to wash out their eyes. But if this crowd continues to balloon, particularly after what happened this morning. Uh, if things continue to balloon, will we see LMPD, will we see the National Guard um, increase or strengthen their tactics? We're not in the, we're not in the future making business. I'll tell you that all. Um, so I don't know. I think we're, you know, like I said, tonight seems like it's died down. We may still hear. We're, we're keeping our ears open. Smattering reports of pockets of protests that can still be going on. Like I said, Sarah Ladd's down there at 26th and Broadway, they can still be going on now. Um, but the main bulk of that kernel, um, I'll turn to a bit of a stuntman, loving and everything. Uh, right, right, right. So again, um, this is Philip Bailey, political reporter here at the, political writer here at the Courier Journal. I want to sign off real fast, but we'll certainly keep you informed of what's going on here in downtown Wolf.
So we're still talking here at the 2 one pop up shop at the light. Um, and uh, it's about 30 minutes before curfew. Remember that. I don't know where my wife is at. to see. Uh, regardless, I wouldn't mind trying to share a cab with them. Um, uh, you can see Absence carrying a gas mask in his hand. Women, you get behind a man. But hold on, hold on. Women, get behind the man. You see all of those cops. I'm not talking about the ones with the artillery. I'm talking about the cops that are just coming and talking shit. That's when every woman steps up. Because one thing is for sure. They will hold all caution when looking at all women. Remember that. I will stand in front of you if your goddamn pussy is scared. Excuse my language. Shit, they just hit the sound. Real so talk. All right, so real quick, y'all. The nurse's station is probably going to be over there in that area. So, like, if it happens, we're looking for that area. I'm trying to get a specific area. Y'all going to be able to see them set up along the sidewalk. The other thing you need, they talked to the sheriff's department early. The sheriff's department said that the 10 o'clock curfew will not fuck with them being released. Like, as far as you really need to come out of there. The sheriff's department also said, they didn't say that this was like, they, they making this statement, they were saying, I can't find a way that they would be mad if people were sitting out here waiting to take people home getting out of jail. Exactly. So what they told me to do was, is go wait in their parking lot. So in my head, I don't know about nobody else here, but again, I love all y'all. I ain't seen anybody go down tonight anytime. We can go over there to their parking lot and we can chill. Matter of fact, perfect. And if they got an issue with that, then we can stay. Hang on, well, let's get into the way. I need everybody to know this. No. I, hold on. No. I need everybody to know this. We have money to bail you out. Not you. I give you my word. You can look me up, get my license number. We have money to bail you out. Not only that, lawyers, you are okay. I give you my honest to God word. You can look me up, come to court with me on the 16th. There's a reason why there's a bunch of lawyers standing there. Let me say this. Talk to them. Let me say this. I got a couple of them too. I do not want to put people in harm's way. This is your first time out here. Realize it's going to get real. So I'm telling you, you got 30 minutes to get back to your car or get home. It's a serious Stay discussion going on. Stay out with us. For those who are. Be prepared are. to go to jail. Be prepared to get bruised. Get prepared to either have to have stitches. Be prepared to get hit with rubber bullets. So I don't want to put people in harm's way. I know you guys came that way with some other people. But we've been leading, doing work all over the city for many, many years. So I want people to understand at 10 o'clock, it's going to get real out here. So I'm telling you. Hey, everybody here, they born for this shit. All right, so again, I say, man, I'm just let me come buckle up. Well, I think this is Buckner. This is Buckner? No, that's not Buckner. Sir, let me ask you. Uh, this is the same hard one with the I don't think it needs deal. to be said why you're Again. out here, uh, posture, but go ahead and tell the audience why you're out here, armed to the teeth, in front of your in front of your store. Protected my store. Protected my life. 
Are you worried about the vandalism that has taken place? Yeah, of course. I worked hard for this. Nobody did anything about it. Has there, have there been any efforts to break in your store, vandalize it? I was surrounded by 900 fucking people at one point. Not today? No, not today. Previously? It was Friday. And, and did police help or were they preoccupied? They were too busy. And I feel bad for them. A lot of other businesses I've noticed have boarded up. Why didn't you board, just board up? Because I'm here. I don't need it. Let me ask you this as a final question. It's not, it's not going to do me any good anyway. When they want to set anything on fire, they're going to set it on fire. And it's easier to set wood on fire. Do you have a position one way or the other on these protests? Or are you more in the position of, look, this is my business. I'm protecting it. I don't care what your cause is. Go ahead. Go ahead. You need some help up? Need, okay. I know, there's a lot of heavy stuff on there. Yeah. Kind of. Right? Look, I've been here for five days. All right? I am not against protesting peaceful protesting. I'm all for it. It's your constitutional right. Period. But going after businesses, going after people, destroying somebody's life for stupidity. No matter what the cause is. That's not a good thing. And I, today was the largest protest I had seen. Folks who were tear gas told us earlier they still intend to come out. How much longer can you do this and how much business are you losing by the fact that you're in downtown and there seems to be perpetual protests all the time? I've, I've been losing a lot since the corona started till now. It's even before this. It's a whole different level. So, are you, are you hoping that... I didn't see your dog. Oh. oh, don't catch my dog fetish on, on here. Oh. Um... Are you hoping that there will be a resolution and of some kind so we can get back to business as usual down here? Resolution for what? As far as the police protests, as far as the people's concerns about the shootings that have taken place? Uh, really, they want to really protest, in my opinion, protest in the right way, but not by looting. You say tonight was a good example of that? There wasn't any looting or... So far, nothing happened. So far. But this is the right time when... The night is young for you. When those roaches, they will come out and destroy everything. This is the right time for it. And you want my opinion? Look, man. This whole issue about race need to be done, ended, period. This whole thing about, oh, police are bad, blah, 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 blah. Not all of them are bad. We're not denying the fact that, that there is some bad apples. You think the Breonna Taylor shooting was an example of bad apples? Had, had they finished with the investigation? I couldn't hear you over the helicopters. Did they finish the investigation yet? The investigation into her shooting? No. We cannot judge it. You cannot judge a book by its cover. So the facts that you know thus far about the case, um, about the use of no-knock warrants, are you okay with that? Do you think the no-knock warrant should be stopped? Or do you think that's something that we should be allowed to continue? As I know from people that I know, they had a, a legit search warrant. Because Tom Wine, the Commonwealth's attorney here in Louisville, Jefferson County, he said at his most recent press conference that no amount of drug money, no amount of drugs is worth a human life. Should we be knocking down people's doors to well, get drugs and I, drug I money? I thought drugs are actually destroying lives. That's what he said. That's what he said. Hold on a second. He that's, that's what the top prosecutor said. It's politic. Now, if you want to get on the politic side of this shit, or the shit show, that's a whole different level. Look. So you going to be out here no matter how long it takes. Even if, if, even if it's five more days, five more weeks. If it takes five more years. I've been here for five days. Absolutely. They actually keep checking on me every hour. So it was good talking to you, as always, man. Be safe out here. But let me say something. Be, and, and it looks like you got a, plenty to be safe. Oh, yeah. I mean, me do, you have a, do you have a magnet on here too, a can opener? No. Okay. Before you change the subject, no, 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 no. if I was the mayor of Louisville, I would walk straight to jail to have him arrest me. 
this, I will have the jail arrest me for treason. Period. Oh, so you think the mayor has committed treason? If was, gotcha. If, if I was the mayor, because look, political correctness in this country is destroyed. It. So you can't count on your vote in the next four years? Absolutely not. I will not vote for his ass. That's for sure. You can't run again anyway. Well, good, sir. Well, good, good speaking to you. And the governor. Good, good, good luck with you. And if you have a stapler, please let me know. You have a lot of stuff on there, man. You got a lot of. No, 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 no. Oh, you're closed. Though. You're closed. Good, 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 good speaking to you, though. Good, good luck, though. Seriously, keep your business safe. Um, look, as a native Louisvillian. I grew up in Minneapolis and George Floyd, man. As a, as a native Louisvillian. There will be those who will, who will say this reminds me of, of 68. And, and there may be some parallels in people's mind, but I think this is an unprecedented level of, of protesting. It's an unprecedented level of um, group of folks who are out. Clearly, uh, we all have various different opinions and ways to handle those opinions, as you saw just down the street here. I mean, my man was dressed up like Bob, the, uh, what was his name, Baghdad Bob? I mean, he was dressed up like, like Rambo to defend his business and those people who have legitimate concerns but the vast majority of folks who are protesting will tell you their chief concern remains uh, what happened to Breonna Taylor and what and what happened uh, to David McAtee and I did notice I did notice that you did see a, a contingency of folks activists protesters who are trying to keep others away from from vandalizing businesses or government buildings uh, I can just tell you, as a native Louisvillian, this is not usual. Um, Louisville is not known as a protest city, but that has clearly changed. I mean, I, I don't know what's happening in the rest of the country right now, but you had massive protests here tonight, and it looks like they're going to continue. And the question is for those in power, not those not in power, but those in power, what decisions are they going to make that will both quell and perhaps die down these protests, but also satisfy those across the political spectrum who have expressed uh, legitimate concerns and uh, outrage about what happened to Breonna Taylor uh, and recently to David McAtee. I mean, so again, various different folks around here. Now downtown is completely a, is, is completely a desert. It's, it's empty. It's a ghost town down here. But it may not be like that tomorrow. There hasn't been one activist or one young person who I've bumped into today who says, I'm not coming back now. Um, and if tear gas and rubber bullets won't turn them away, what will? Perhaps there will, be, there will come this week. You know, this was supposed to be the day of reflection. Mayor Fisher said this was supposed to be the day of reflection. But I don't think there was a lot of reflecting going on. Um, so the question for him and others is, what is going to be the resolution? Don't know that yet. Again, this is Philip Bailey, political writer here at the Courier Journal. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll stay on top of this issue uh, as long as we can. Um, and thank you for watching. I'm talking about America because it's not just a black hood. It's American land. Cleanliness is godliness. And so, to, to clarify, is everyone in there that they were arrested last night or in the past few days that you're trying to release, or are there more people that you're trying to release that were arrested before that? We're trying to release everyone that tonight, of course, we require everyone that is released was. Uh, 
part of this protest. Now, after tonight, we're letting them know we want everyone who is not in there for a violent crime to be housed somewhere else. It is proven I was just locked up the night before last. They told me, multiple officers said, you have to wear this mask. There is COVID-19 in this building. They're being killed. We want everybody to come out of there if you are not there for a violent crime. We want everyone to come out of there. We can house them somewhere else. I understand call them criminals if that's what they did, but you can't even call them a criminal because you're housing them before court. You can't call them a criminal yet. You cannot judge them as a criminal because you think they did it, because you charged them with, because I know for a fact I was just charged with obstruction. We're guilty before proven innocent. If that's what that is, we have to give them their rights. We don't sit them in there with a deadly virus, let Trump say. Trump, we need you. If you truly care about America, God bless you. I will always love all who loves all. But if you hate anyone, and I do mean anyone that is an American brother of mine, I don't have the same type of feeling. And I promise you, I am a very respectful man. I love Martin Luther King. He had a dream, but I say wake up and make that dream a reality. And I'll do it a different kind of way. At the same time, as long as you come peaceful, we'll be peaceful. We're not attacking, we're defending ourselves. We love you. God bless. Thank you for your time, Darren. Hi, this is Sam Hardiman with the Commercial Appeal, part of the USA Today Network. You just heard from Darren Abstin, one of the activists here. There is about a group of maybe more than 50 people outside of 21 Poplar, which in Shelby County, Tennessee, is where about 1,900 inmates are housed. He was saying that he is uh, this group is here to secure the release of uh, more than uh, several dozen people that he says are, are still inside after being arrested last night after protests and the police ordered them to disperse. This is the sixth night of protests against police to brutality in Memphis. And, uh, you know, there's a parking lot across the street. I'll, I'll turn to, to show you. This is the, this is the group behind me. And uh, there's a 10 p.m. curfew. So right now we are, we're about 12 minutes away from that. And so Abstin says that the, the Sheriff's Department has assured them if they stay in this parking lot, they will not be interfered with and we'll see what happens. We're gonna stay here with you. You see, the group is just quiet. There's no chanting. There's, you know, just people milling about in a in a parking lot. Um, we'll see, you know, the the exception to Mayor Strickland's curfew, according to the text of his executive order, and what he said today are essential workers due to COVID-19, as well as people with health emergencies. It's it's unclear if a group waiting for to getting people out of 201 Poplar is going to fit that. And we'll see. I, I, I'm not certain what's going to happen. There may not be a confrontation. There may be. You can see right now there is not a heavy police presence. You can see cruisers at the end of the street, but there is not really any. So this is this is once again being repeated for bail support. This is for 
people who are locked up inside, who are who are incarcerated, who are arrested as part of this. You heard Darren Abstin earlier. If you were with us, he was you know concerned about the outbreak of COVID-19 in the jail. It's a substantial outbreak of COVID-19. More than 100 people have tested positive inside 201. Those who have tested positive are not still all there. You can see that there's now police chopper overhead. That the chopper is not made the rounds that much recently. Again, absence get going over. So again, Jake is not a confrontation. Get our people out. They said, of course, as long as we don't have a crazy crowd out here, they will let our people that we've already bonded out. They will release them. We made a deal with them. So unless you are family, you don't need to be here right now. Add us. You can add me on Facebook. I can assure you, we are coming right back out here. Not tonight, but I can assure you that. One thing is for sure, we are not going to hurt our own cause. I'm just being really stupid right now. No disrespect. Please hear me when I say we are people inside of a jail. Everyone, hold on. Stay with us here. My girl is going to hold the feed for me. I'm not here to offer your support. We come out home safely. That's what I'm saying. Unless you're trying to be here to get someone home. Right, right, right. I'm joking. I'm going to tonight. Let's meet everyone. 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 let you want to go to the bridge right now. That's Mira, where are you going? Hey, Darren. How do you spell your name, man? How do you spell your name? Okay. Finally got it. ABS TME. Patrick, by the way, the reality is it's going to be seven minutes and it's not really <laughs> it is it is rolling. So. Yeah. Thank you, Darren. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Get over here right in six minutes. Okay, no, it's not your car. Completely fine. Yeah, they will not pull you over. They cannot pull you out of the car because I know you're all the curves and all of that. Getting home. You can just say you can't. Is there, is there a group of people at the bridge right now? Yes. Oh, okay. bridge. Okay. oh dude, yeah, go look at Hunter. Support, please. Yeah, We're Hunter's asking you feet. to leave. They will not let them out until there is a we're leaving. Come on. Yeah, so we're going to walk please. to the Hernandez City of Bridge. Please. Because in five minutes, who knows what's up with the cops. Please. Please. They're not going to. All right, We're leaving to on Pablo. There, there's a group. They're not going to know who right. They're not going to be like, oh, right. Someone takes, pull up, pull up. Pull up Hunter uh, Dempster's uh, Facebook, please, please would you? So you hear people telling people to leave, those that are here to pick up people out of 201 Poplar. They're, they're, if you're not here for that, they're telling you to leave. We're going to leave. We hear there's a disturbance out on the Hernando de Soto Bridge. So we're going to walk this way. 
It is about five minutes to 10 o'clock, it's curfew. And so we're walking down Poplar Avenue in Memphis. Some of my colleagues with me. You didn't hear our, our, our little back chat here. So guys, we're walking down Poplar Avenue. We're gonna see what's happening at the Hernando de Soto Bridge. There's allegedly still a disturbance there. There's been traffic going through it yeah. from what I saw all night. We just drove over it like 45 minutes ago. Yeah, Again? So, I don't know if there's a disturbance on the bridge. We hear that, we've been told that. Joe Rondoni, Joe, Joe, you just drove over the bridge like 45 minutes ago? Yeah. So, what's going on with the traffic? No slowing at all. Okay. There was a few people with their with their hazards on the last few strikers, but uh, that pretty much is over. Okay. So one of the planned protests tonight was a was a slowdown on the I-40 bridge. This was at their the march. Tried to walk there last night, and, and that was when tear gas was deployed on, on the protest. But now it is um it's about two minutes to ten. It, And so I'm Sam Hardiman with the Commercial Appeal. The, the streets are pretty much empty. We're gonna see what happens as curfew comes in Memphis. Journalists are among essential workers. They're allowed to be at out their curfew. We are, we're sticking together. We're wearing helmets and, and glasses just because of tear gas last night. But we don't expect any trouble at this point. Yeah, I don't think they're at this time. They can't get up there. What they could do We're gonna we're gonna continue walking back to where where our cars were, and we're gonna check on the uh, Hernando de Soto Bridge. So, if you want to stay with us, please do. I'm gonna check out Riverside and see what's going on. Police chop overhead. I, I don't know if anyone is still out. This is law enforcement officers. You can see there's there's a police presence in front of us. You're still with us here in Memphis. This is getting across the street. I, it was a little. I just kind of jaywalked a little bit. I apologize. It, Kind of was stuck between a, a rock and a hard crosswalk there. What time is it? It is just about 10 o'clock. So we are at curfew. I'm gonna drop back with my colleagues here. You can see there's a police presence in front of us. We're gonna take you around on curfew to, to see what's happening.
We were walking back to our cars here. We're on Poplar Avenue. Live streaming, there's some Tennessee State Troopers. This has been a, uh, a subdued protest tonight. You can see a heavy law enforcement presence up there. The curfew is now in effect. Some barricades, that's Civic Center Plaza right there. So, so on my left is the Memphis, uh, this is the Shelby County building. This is um, a city of Memphis building that houses the police department and the housing community development department, among others. Hello, everyone. It's uh, you know a couple minutes after curfew here. It's pretty still. Go yeah, we're gonna go down Main. Why not? Yeah, we're walking down Main Street. We're walking back to our cars. I think those who who told us there was a competition on the bridge probably just wanted us to be away from where they were, waiting for people to get out of Two One Poplar. Okay, thank you, officer. Thank you. Have a good night. So this is about a couple minutes after 10 o'clock. Main Street Mall is still. We just interacted with a few police officers. They asked them for media. We said yes, and we're on our way. It's pretty simple. Excuse me, everyone. I'm, I'm still on Facebook Live. We're, we're trying to figure out our next steps here. It is still in downtown Memphis. It is just quite still. And so actually, we'll, we'll go on a little tour of what's going to be one of the larger construction projects in Memphis history. You can see this stuff is kind of roped off here. The, the Lowe's Hotel, which is going to be a 24-story luxury hotel, is going to raise on this block here that you see in front of me. And uh, they, they've just removed a trolley stop. So this was used to be a trolley stop, and it's actually going to be over there. Oh, there's some horse manure. Okay, we're going to walk down Main Street down to Beale. You can see the pretty. Fernando Soda Bridge, those lights, it's a rainbow tonight. Police presence in City Hall. Giving us a little wave very subdued, at least here on Main Street. Silent beginning of curfew. There's, a, there's, there's the police chopper overhead. Thank you. 
So once again, this is Sam Hardin with the Commercial Pit. We're walking down an empty Main Street Mall. It is still right now here in Memphis, about 10 minutes after curfew started at 10 p.m. You see a heavy police presence. You don't see much else. You don't really see, you know, across the country there have been windows boarded up. There, there, there's some damage done last night to Rhapsody. That's the first time I'm seeing this. I've walked this strip a couple of times now. So you can see that there isn't the heavy apprehension in the in the local business community. You see some some boards, but not not large scale protective measures being taken because the protests here in Memphis for six days, including tonight, have been largely peaceful. My colleagues are now making fun of me for how much I'm enjoying narrating what is nothing right now. I... I think that, you know, if we're going to comment on Lord of the Rings movies, I think that Two Towers is the best movie for those of us still watching. Yeah. It's good. It's a lot better tonight, to be honest. When I was carrying, like, hearing the phone was pretty tough. And so here, this is the Courtyard Marriott. Last night there was a chair thrown through that window. Now there's a board. This is, uh, you know, we're going to want a tour of, of downtown Memphis. These are the trolley tracks. This is Court Square during times when there isn't a pandemic. On Thursdays, there there's a food truck cart during the summertime. And, you know, the thousands of people who work downtown congregate here. And so we're getting we're getting reports from our other reporters who follow the main body of protesters who did not who broke off and walked away from that that splinter group that I'm a man plaza, which is where sanitation marches began during the poor people's campaign in Memphis that preceded Martin Luther King getting killed. They, they dispersed carefully. Those who were at I'm a man plaza they dispersed. Memphis is calm tonight during the night of curfew. First night of curfew. Still, you can smell the flowers. Go no peace! 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 No pe
did. They appeared in riot shields with, with nightsticks, and they, they walked away. A uh, Tennessee State Trooper, after being asked by a Memphis police officer, Lewis Brownlee, to put down his nightstick, did. And that was it was a demonstration of uh, the trust that is, that is trying to be built right now and maybe could be built between activists and police. But it is definitely a demonstration of how peaceful Memphis is once again. So everyone, I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off here. If there's something else going on, we'll we'll come back. Thank you. So everyone, thank you on USA Today. My colleagues are waving good night. For local journalism. Thank, thank you for watching. There was a peaceful night of protest here in Memphis. We we thought it could get tense, but the sixth night, the first night of curfew in Memphis had ended peacefully. Thanks for watching.